Hello everyone and welcome to the Deeply Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Deeply Renegade, and I'd like to welcome you guys to episode 244. Today is Saturday, um, September 1st, 2018, and I'm glad you could join me today. <sighs> what would it be? It's that beginning of the month awkwardness where you're like, September. <laughs> No worries, it's 86 up here. <laughs> Fall is far. <laughs> oh, well, I don't even know why I'm drinking coffee. Life's a mystery some days. So, welcome! Um, what would it be? I, I don't know. I think it's gonna be short. <laughs> it's just my guess. So, we could show you the, the right side. That would make a little bit more sense. So, um, I think most of the knitting love this week ended up going to my On the Spice Market, which I have the markers on the end, but I haven't needed them for quite some time. So I am working now on this transition piece, um, or what would it be? I think what ends up making sort of the main body of the shawl. And I am, what would it be, halfway through the fourth color at this point. Um, so the color transitions seem to be rather subtle, but I am here in the color project progression and I've already done these guys. So I'll have two more darker ones after this. Um, and I am using Miss Babs, um, Toasty Toes, and Hot Shot. The Hot Shot is in Sea Siren, which is a um, one-of-a-kind colorway, and then the Toasty Toes is a Beachcomber Gradient. So, coming along nicely, but um, what would it be? Not, not proper shawl size yet. <laughs> um, so, I found that to be interesting because it seems like I have lots and lots of yarn, so not sure what's going on there. Um, I guess I haven't checked gauge either. So, that's the story there. Um, I'm knitting this on my 3mm needle, the US 2.5, so that's probably also resulting in a little bit of firmness there. So, coming along. This is on the Spipes Market. It is a Um, it just seems like I have so much yarn. <laughs> so, it seems like I have most of this gain, and I suppose that I am slowly but surely using more and more yarn as I progress, but it just seems not super duper crazy. I don't know. So, it still seems like I'm gonna have oodles. <laughs> That is the story there, so I am more than halfway done with this second major section, so we'll see how it goes. Um, it's been enjoyable to work on. It was uh, my project of choice this week. Um, I had a work conference, and so I was using that to help focus, and so the only row where it didn't seem to work the best was when I was... Um, doing one of the more detailed pattern rules. Oh, such is life. I'm really terrible. This project has gotten a bit more love because it was what I was primarily working on at knit night last night. And this is the mini dress, which is a caddy lit better pattern. Um, so I am working on the back, looks like that stitch has escaped, and I'll need to fix that. Um, so I am not yet to the point where I will start, um, what is it, putting, putting in where the armholes begin. 
but I am pretty close. Um, it appears that I decided to split the difference <laughs> on the first part, which is this. Um, so I have centered up the stripe because um, I made the stripe like an inch bigger. Um, so I've centered up the, the stripe for that. So we'll see how everything comes together. Um, I probably need to, to be a little bit more careful with this one. So um, the only thing that I need to pay attention to is the fact that um, Olivia are just making sure that I'm starting in the right spot and I wasn't quite there last night though I was cruising along um, and it'll be nice to get some of these balls of yarn off of this as you do. Um, the problem is with the back that it will be using more of the blue yarn and the blue yarn is the one that I definitely have been trying to save as much as possible. I don't know if I'll end up um, deciding to do some sort of design element that incorporates the white and teal on the bottom so that I can get as much length as possible. Who knows? So definitely getting closer and it's going to start flying. I just sort of came off the needles there. Um, so what I might end up doing is figuring out a way to actually seam this guy together at that point and just make sure everything's looking right, which may make it a little bit awkward, but maybe not terribly awkward. Um, and just sort of getting a sense for what I will need to do in order to complete this. So I am working from the waist stripe out because I want to make sure that I have um, as much yarn as possible. I didn't want to run out of blue as you do. So we shall see how all these different pieces come together. So decent progress on this. Um, I'm definitely noticeably burning through the blue at this point in like comparison to a full 50 grams. So I have quite a bit more knitting to complete. As you do. Um, so the primary question would be then finish this top, seam together. This is really slick right now. I just keep dropping stitches all over the place. I need less stitches on this needle. <laughs> so what I'm thinking of is seaming it together, um, putting on the sleeve so that I will have used most of the teal, um, and then sort of deciding from there where to go next. Um, then I will need to um, undo the provisional bind off and then start working on the other pieces. So, shouldn't be too crazy. I did end up making this into more pieces than what it asked for, so there's that. Um, But I think that'll end up making you feel a little more comfortable about what's going on. And um, it's sort of the case where I'm in the part of the project where I do need to think a little bit more about what's going on, and making sure everything is correct. So, shouldn't be too crazy. And I'm sort of trying to figure out what to do about my little flyaway pieces of yarn. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh. It just keeps coming off. So, I believe what would be the plan will be to get this into 
a fairly finished looking state before I end up, um, what would it be? So get this to the point where I can, get this to the point where I can like try it on, see how everything's looking, and then I can figure out where to go from there. Um, I'm probably going to end up needing to do, I think, a faster rate of increases than the pattern call score. Um, just, I think, looking at the schematic, um, I don't know, could be off, but it may turn out that I actually want to be somewhere between the medium and large sizes for the bottom. Um, I should be good for what I have going on with the waist, so. As you do, and in some ways it almost looks like this schematic is a little, a little simplified, so. Shouldn't be too crazy. And then there's also the awkwardness of the fact that I will then be working the path backwards. So, one thing I haven't decided about is obviously, so the pattern calls for you to do like the neck finishing stuff in the same main color, um, and I probably won't be doing that, so I'll probably need to figure out how I'm going to incorporate the other colors in without dropping all my stitches, which it seems to be very keen. Super keen. How many times have I fixed this in this video? So, shouldn't be, shouldn't be too crazy. But I think, I think that's what I'm going to have to do because I just, like, I have a need to know about what it is going to look like. And I think until I satisfy that need to know, I'm going to be having a rough time figuring out what that plan needs to be in order for things to be correct. It's just one of those things. I will feel much more comfortable about my plan when I think that has worked out. So, shouldn't be too, too crazy, but it's maybe a little bit irritating. I guess the other nice thing is that the pattern does expect you to finish it off in a single color, so it could be the case where I end up doing something with um, a white stripe at the bottom and maybe white at the top to tie it together. You should see. I'm pretty, I'm pretty flexible um, in all things except making sure that I have enough navy blue yarn to complete my evil plan. And then I'm having an entertaining time trying to figure out what to do with some of these, um, would it be single plies that have escaped my needles. Oh well, not the end of the world. So I am knitting this out of Fibra Natura um, Flex, which is a 100 percent linen yarn, and what would that be? So, coming in at 270, okay, so it's like 270 yards per um, 100 grams. So, it's definitely, what would it be, like, grist-wise, um, pretty, pretty dense yarn. But, whatever, such is life. So, so that's the story there. Um, I probably need to get this to maybe a slightly safer place where I don't need to be watching it quite as so much to make sure I'm to the point where I actually do need to start doing all the fun shaping, but I think I'm getting pretty close. 
this point. It just wants to curl on itself so much that, yeah, so you can see here, it's only a few more, handful more rows before I get to decide there. And it seems like it was the same distance earlier <laughs> as well. I know, I haven't worked on this project too much today. Um, I have, what was it? I ended up finally getting a local library card because um, I realized that I probably needed to read a little bit more than I have been. So I got my library card, um, picked up two um, C.S. Friedman books from the library that I had not read before. Um, what I did not realize was that the um, one of them that I picked up was actually a trilogy, so whoopsies. <laughs> um, the other one I picked was a standalone book, so that was good. Um, I didn't. I didn't think to look. I had the power of the internet in my hand, and I. I just. I didn't use it. So, as a result, um, what would it be? Um, what I ended up doing was basically using my phone as a paperweight, <laughs> and. Um, I was knitting on my, on the spice market shawl as I was reading, which was really nice. Um, so, so, so that was good. Um, I decided that it was maybe a little bit too crazy to attempt spinning while reading. I think that's what audiobooks are for. So, I'm not sure how much of an audiobook collection the library has. Since my town doesn't have a library, I can leverage the other towns. So, pretty cool. So, um, I did get a chance to start my Nest um, Persephone spin. So this is a Superwash Merino, Merino Silk, in shades of um, blue, teal, brown, and sort of this, um, would it be, old gold yellow. And I'm super duper excited about how everything's turning out. Um, I am doing this as I'm gonna, my plan is, so I, this is basically the fiber totally unchanged, and this is um, me just spinning it end to end with the intention of chain plying. You can see the fuzzy edge on that. Um, I brought this with me to that night, but it was pretty warm. <laughs> It was pretty warm up there, so I didn't end up spending, spending too much time spinning. So I am just moving my hook whenever the color changes and um, enjoying the journey as I go. So really excited with how gorgeous this fiber is. Fun to just spin it straight from the braid, no changes whatsoever. So that's been good. Um, and I ended up taking the bottom off the wheel because it was it had, my end had come free from its containment, so I'm like, eh, why well, haul the wheel up here when the bobbin is easy to get to. So, not too crazy there, just whatever, a pretty good um, palette cleanser spin before I get into other things. Um, I ended up rearranging my shelves a little bit, so you'll notice that this cubby here is way more empty, so I put all of my spin the bin things in there, um, and I ended up moving my hand spun into cubbies that are out of frame. Oh, but now it's in frame. <laughs> Very gently, hopefully, hopefully that was pretty slow. <laughs> so what I have here is a very full bin, chock full of fiber, and I realized that, um, basically speaking, all my hand spun was also trying very desperately to escape, and there's also some here too. So it ended up bringing up an interesting point. I'll just gently rotate back. <laughs> there, there are parts of the parts of the stash that you don't usually see. <laughs> so. What I was attempting to do was just to try to keep everything contained nicely, and it always seemed like it was about to explode. I 
didn't want it. I didn't want it to explode. <laughs> so, um, because there was so little left in my bin, at this point I decided that was probably a better place for it to be. Um, so, because it is a long weekend, because it's Labor Day weekend, I have, excuse me, um, decided to um, run the next stage of my dyeing experiment, even though I'm not entirely done with the ramifications of the first one. So, what was it? First round of the dyeing experiment must have been November, and then I dyed all of my fiber in the lock, had all sorts of crazy colors, but not good penetration. So then when I prepped all that fiber, it turned out that it had a mostly gray tinge to it. So then during the hottest part of the year, I ended up doing some solar dyeing with some of my blue dye from my food coloring collection. Um, that turned the sort of pale teals and pinks into sort of like deeper purples and teals. Um, and then I ended up finishing exhausting the dye bath completely on the stove. Um, and pretty much at that point everything was a pretty uniform teal with sort of darker streaks going through it. I have pulled the first half off of the hackle, which involves a lot of the same drafting motions, but sort of an overdrive because you're trying to whatever, pull draft up all, all of that top. So I have a plastic bag full of that first half, and now I'm in the process of applying the second half of the fiber to the hackle. Um, hopefully, maybe a little bit more, more refined than before, but who knows. I was hoping to get it all on, but apparently that was naive. I mean, it isn't like I was able to pull a continuous top off of it either, I needed to take lots of breaks. Because, I don't know if you guys can tell, but my... <laughs> My thumb doesn't actually want to be straight. <laughs> I didn't do, but... <laughs> so, to have a motion where you have to keep things straight, when really it just wants to be 90 degrees off. <laughs> Interesting challenge. But I decided to progress to the next stage, so what I've done is I've taken my medium gray fiber from my Corydale cross shell and cross BFL, where the BFL cross Shetland is the smaller part, so it is half Corydale, quarter BFL, and quarter Shetland. Um, so I've split that into rough thirds, I wasn't doing anything super duper scientific, and I am because my first batch of fiber I was intending to make purple and it didn't quite work out, um, I'm going to try and do that with this one. So what I'm going to do is, um, while I'm podcasting, I've let the fiber soak in water. And then what I'm going to do is probably, or what I'm going to do next is, um, mix up the dye liquor from my Wilton's food coloring gel, and one third of it, look at that pinky, <laughs> one, one third of it I am going to go for black, one third of it I'm going to use the Wilton's violet, um, and then I will probably do, um, yeah, I think like a lighter blue shade. Actually, so I, I'm pretty sure I have a lighter blue shade among among my, my available dyes. Um, with the goal being a very nice jewel tone. So then I'll have fiber that are three different colors that I'll then set. Um, hopefully get really good penetration like I did sort of with the second batch. Um, this would all be dyed in the lock. Um, Ooh, what would it be? So then I'll have three different colors of fiber, which I'll then blend together on my combs. Um, once I get my balls atop from the combs, <laughs> then I will get to um, put it all in the hackle and then pull it off from there. So hopefully that'll result in sort of that cool marl color shifting thing that I was going for initially. 
which I sort of lost when I ended up over tying it all blue. So, that's the thought process there. Um, and what I'm going to do is avoid using acid until I come to the dye setting step. And the thought process there, actually when I think about it, when I'm... I probably want to have less water in my in my bins than I currently have, so I may need to dump, dump a little bit. Because I, I would like for it to all fit in my stock pot. Um, so then I will have three different colors of fleece to play with and then mix it all up and go from there. So shouldn't shouldn't be too too crazy. And um, then I will pull that top and um, be ready for whatever that next stage is. Um, what would it be? It's sort of the case where I want to finish all of the fun things that I'm doing with this fleece before moving on to that fleece up there. So it's just hanging out and then I occasionally pull clumps of stuff from it. I don't know whether or not it's more yellow than it used to be or what. So I'm pretty sure that I got everything that I needed to out of it, but who knows? So So I think I think that's gonna be the fun plan for this weekend is doing that. So that will probably be what I end up doing next is mixing up the dye liquor and then putting it into my three different bins. So should be good fun. Um and it probably means that I need to do a little bit of hurry up on my on my haggle pulling experiment. Um it's right now set up in the office, which is more my husband's face than mine. <laughs> but it turns out that my little IKEA desk is actually very nicely suited for holding the hackles. So. Um, my my desk, effectively in here, is um, not quite s set up right in order to properly hold it. So whatever. So that's that's sort of the the crafting plans right now. Definitely getting to the point where it's like, ha ah, <laughs> why did I leave my hair down? <laughs> it's way too warm in here. But, whatever. I found out of coffee. It's not too crazy. So, I think I might be able to record next week and maybe it's definitely going to be a Sunday recording on the 9th, if that is the case. Um, but I'll try to see if I can fit in, because I, I don't know, I will have more, more time the next week as well to record, so hopefully it isn't interrupted in the next two weeks, but if it is, then it'll be, what, the 16th of September when I record next, so, but I think, I think I can pull off, I think we can pull off the night, so, we'll see. Um... And I'm just sort of looking forward to the chill weekend, like making sure all my laundry's done. <laughs> Being prepared for for the nonsense of what would it be all all of this travel I have in front of me. So whatever, shouldn't be too shouldn't be too crazy, but never know sometimes. So what else? So. It looks like my nan is going to be keeping me plenty busy. It looks like, I don't know, I'm not sure whether or not I'm going to start a spindle project or not. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Whether or not, or what makes sense or what doesn't make sense, whatever. Um, now that I'm down to two other spin the bin fibers as possible, then it may make sense to, for example, take um, either the Nudian color or the Hog Island and do something with that. Not sure whether or not I want to have a different project end up being my support spindling project. Who knows? Um, still excited about yarn school. Um, that's gonna be. I don't know. Let me 
just check the calendar. Okay, so yarn school is going to be, I believe, the 11th through the 15th. Um, and then I will be working things, I think, for Rhinebeck weekend is actually my sister's wedding, so. Alas. <laughs> Whatever. Sacrifice is most we made. She's the last one to get married off. Um, my sister-in-law successfully um, stopped being pregnant. <laughs> We're all so proud of her. <laughs> so, what would it be? So that was the, the big news Thursday was that my nephew Dominic was born, so I'll be meeting him and and Cameron, my other nephew, um, in two weeks, so that should be a lot of fun, or make me be filled with regret. <laughs> oh, whatever. So, that was definitely the, some of the exciting news, and we're all, what would it be? All excited. So, very happy there. Um, I have not yet seen pictures of babies in knitwear, but hopefully. <laughs> Or maybe I'll be able to capture my own babies and wear pictures. That would also be pretty awesome. <laughs> but, yeah, whatever. I know, my mom's on the ground, so... <laughs> she, she, she's much, she's much more savvy about these things than I think my siblings are. So. I think that is everything this week. Um... Thank you so much for, for tuning in. I'm very excited that all of you guys um, watch and enjoy this little podcast. So, with that, I hope you guys have a lovely week, and I look forward to talking to you hopefully next week, probably the week after. <laughs> Alright, take care guys. Bye-bye.